people you're welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be making this evil blouse okay this judge blouse is usually made with your judge fabric it is quite simple you can use any that technique of your choice but the only difference is that you're using judge fabric to make it okay so for this type today i use us one and a half yard of raw silk and you know this raw silk is basically going to serve as the main clothes because the judge itself is net okay you can also use satin okay then you also be needing your lining as well as your judge panel as you can see here okay so i went ahead i cut out from the lining the amount that i think will be enough to make the blouse as well as from the raw silk I cut out what is going to be enough to make the blouse. Then I went ahead. I fills it with my interfacing. I use ST in fusing the satin. And also I use paper stay to fuse the lining. Okay. I'm using a very high quality rustic here. I call it Indian rustic. So I'm going to fold my lining into two. Because I'm going to be drafting it on the lining. When I'm done, and I'll use the lining to cut out the raw silk, and I'm going to be drafting the front first. This is my guideline, which is going to serve as the shoulder. So I'm going to take my vertical measurement. So from that shoulder, I'm going to measure the length of the ham hole. I use nine inches for the length of the ham hole. Then I measure down the nipple point, then the waist length, and the length of the blouse. The length of my blouse is 20 five inches so i did not have any seam allowance to the length because this is the lining when i'm done using this lining to draft it i'm going to use the lining to cut out the main uh the raw stick which is going to be having the seam allowance for the length okay then i will go ahead and we extend the lines so you can see from this lining i did not fuse the upper part of the lining with my interfacing because the upper part is going to have a yoke so that i don't waste my interfacing i just left a small portion of the upper part which will serve as the yoke eventually okay so let's get into the drafting so at the shoulder line here i'm going to import the shoulder measurement divided by two my client's shoulder is 16 divided by two that will be eight inches i mark the eight inches and i'm going to roll it straight down to the armhole length which is the chest line okay so from the footed edge up here, I measure three inches inward, then at the tip of the shoulder right there, I measure one inch downward, then I'll connect this point together, and I'm going to add half inch for the shoulder seam allowance. The next thing is to bring out the shape of the dart. So I'll skip the chest line, I'll move to the nipple point line. You can see this is the nipple point line. At this line, I'm going to import the nipple to nipple distance divided by two plus half inch seam allowance. So my client's nipple to nipple is eight inches divided by two, that will be four. Then with half, that will be four and a half. So I'll mark four and a half here. And I'm going to roll it straight down to the length of the blouse. Then I'll come to the ham hole, starting from the shoulder slope here. I'll measure down to the chest line and I'll locate the mid ham hole. And from that point, I'm going to come in by half inch and connect it to the shoulder tip as well as connect it to the nipple point line. Next, at the underboss line, at the side, of the line i'm going to take half inch dot and i have the option of reeling it straight down or connecting it back to the line okay if the person is having big tummy make sure you connect it back to the line but if the person is a bit flat on the tummy you can just really straight down from that half inch okay but i'm kind of like blending mine to the line but not exactly on the line the way you can see here about quarter inch away of the down part okay so the next thing now is to move to the other side of the line and at the other side i'm going to take two inches that the dart intake here depends on the bust size okay but i'm taking two inches for my client so i measure the two inches and i will use scarf ruler to connect it to the nipple point line from the underboss like this can you see so after this the next thing now is for you to roll it to the m line from the underboss you have the option of making it straight but like i said earlier if the person is having tummy you connect it back to the middle line okay 
So, but in my own case, I'm just connecting it such that it's almost to the line, but not exactly on the line. It's like about half inch away from the line. Do you understand? Okay. So all this little, little step is going to help the client to feel comfortable in the blouse. You know, it's, she's still going to be tying a wrapper on top of it. So you don't want it to be too tight on her tummy. So that's just for comfort, okay? That's just the reason for all these little, little modifications, all right? So, so the next thing now is just for you to come to the mid ham hole. From that mid ham hole, you're going to come down by two inches. And from that two inches, you're going to connect it to the nipple point line with the cuff ruler then you're going to extend your dot leg outside the ham hole with two inches then after that you finish the ham hole with the cuff this way all right so the last step now is for us to impose our measurements that is our circumference measurement and uh, we are going to be replacing all our dot intake as well as, well as putting our seam allowances okay so I'll come to the chest line, I'll pull the bust circumference divided by 4. Then I'll replace the dot, the pass through dot point. Then I'll add my same allowance. Then I'll move to the waistline, I'm going to pull the waist circumference divided by 4. Then I'll measure the dot intake on the waistline, I'll replace it and then put my same allowance. Then I'll move to the M line, I will Pull the hip circumference divided by four. Then I'll measure the dot intake that pass through the hip line. I'm going to put it there and also my seam allowance. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and connect all the points together. Next are the side seam from that M line. I'm going to come up by two inches and I'm going to connect it to my dart leg. This is just to give it a curve effect of the hem line so that it doesn't just go straight, okay? So the next thing now is to import the neckline. So I made my neck width to be four inches and the neck depth to be three and a half inches. Then I connect these points together. So the next thing now is to import the position for the yoke. Your yoke style depends on what you want, but I'm going to be making it to be a slight sweetheart shape, not so deep, you can see. Then I'm going to just connect it to the mid armhole this way. So the next thing now is just for me to cut it out. Okay, so for the lining and the raw silk to mash up very well at the bust area i usually cut them together so you can see i just put the lining on top of the satin we already fused the satin with our interfacing and the satin is folded into two and don't forget you're going to be adding same allowance to the end line of the satin So when I'm done cutting from the hemline, I'll just mash the two panels together the way you see me doing it here, just like this. Then if there's any excess there at the armhole area, you have the option of cutting it off or you leave it there till you're done sewing it together, then you blend it off. Okay, you can see this is where you're supposed to stop judging from the yoke. Can you see? So you can just mark it and notch. And by the time you are done stitching the panels together, you can now trim off that part. You can see that we have used shock to shock it now. Okay, so you have the option of cutting it now, but I'm not going to be doing that until I'm done joining the panels together. But I will notch it. So the next thing now is to cut out your yoke. Don't forget to put notching in the appropriate places especially the under busts. So I'll go ahead, I'll cut the yoke. You can start it to use the George fabric itself to cut your yoke or you can do what I'm doing here. I'm using a machine tool net to cut out the yoke. Make sure you check the direction of the stretch of the net. 
before you cut it out the part that stretches the most is going to be for the across width and the one that have little on the stretch will be for the length don't forget to have your same allowance of half inch to the down part of the yoke and your fabric will be folded into four so that you can use one to line the other okay So can you see I added half inch to the down parts of the yoke. So if you open up the panels, this is what you have. What you need to go and do now is just to take to the machine. You join these three panels together and you also repeat the same thing on the lining. When you're joining them together, you start from the M line and ensure the notching at the under busts. Ensure they are matching on both panels. So when you're done joining them, you're going to notch and then you take to your ironing table, you press upon your seam and you will also repeat the same step on your lining. And after that, you're going to attach your bra cup to the lining. You can also pad this with your wedding ground using bra cup. I'm done with the lining, so we are moving on to most important and the most crucial part of this tutorial today. So make sure you pay attention. So if you have mannequin, that would be the best because it's mannequin I'm using now. But if you don't have mannequin, it's okay. You can just put some clothes, use it or use your tailor's arm and put underneath those breast area. So that it will look as if it's a human being that is wearing it. Do you understand? But if you have mannequin, very great. So let's go ahead. Let me show you how to drip the panel on the already sewn posterior bodies. Okay, so I place the raw silk on the mannequin. As you can see here, you place it such that it follows the shape of the mannequin. Make sure everything follows the shape. And then you go ahead, you pin it to the body of the mannequin. Then when you're done, you're going to place the church panel on top of it like this. And stretching it out to make sure it follows the shape of the raw silk. And again, we usually, if it's not following the shape, we usually put both that on the panel at the two sides so that it creates like a kind of uh, shape around that bust area so that it doesn't look flat at the end of the day when you're done. So make sure you stretch it out and then put your bust that around the bust area. Okay, so I'll go ahead now. You can see the way I'm doing it using my hand to walk through it and as I'm doing that, I'm also pinning. So you just make sure you pin. I'm pinning it to the raw silk. So if after you put it, there is need for you to put like a boss that you can actually do that. But for this one, I just following the shape, so I don't need any any that. Sometimes we used to bend it here like this if it's not relaxing here. But because this one is just serving you, so it's not extending to the neck area, so it's a bit easy. Do you understand? I'm done pinning the panel to the body of the raw silk so i'll go ahead now i'll trim off the SS the way you see me doing it here like i said around that bust area towards the underarm that side ensure to put your bust that if it's not relaxing around that place just the way i've explained so i'm um, just trimming off the SS net from 
decide following the shape of the raw silk. So when you're done cutting it out, the next thing you're going to do is just to carefully lift the, uh, the pin off from the mannequin's body. But then the net and the raw silk, they will still be together and you just lift them all out from the mannequin. So you're done, you go back to your sewing machine. So I'm just going to stitch the net down. So I'm done attaching the net on top of it and this is how it is. So the next thing is just to keep this one aside and I'll work on the yoke. So this is my yoke. You know I cost two. I'll use one to turn the holder at the neckline. So after ironing the net, I just stitch round the body this way so that the two of them can be together on the same line. So it will be easy for me to attach to the main dress, okay? Next, I fold it into two like this. Then I notch this down part, just a tiny little cut, about quarter inch. I will also notch the center of the main thread, that sweetheart part, I'll notch it. Then after that, I'll place the yoke on top of the body like this. I'll pin it at the center. Then I'll pin it all around so that it can be easy for me to sew. Then when I'm done pinning, I'll just stitch the yoke to the body. So when you're done joining the yoke together with the body, you're going to like flatten the yoke towards the body and you're going to pin it to the body so that it will be easy for you to place the lining on it and follow your previous seam line you can see the way i'm pinning the net to the body of the dress dragging it away from the seam allowance to make it look flat around that seam allowance so when you're done with that you're going to grab your lining you're going to place them on top of each other right side to right side and you're going to pin all around the neck uh, around the yoke area and then you're going to follow the previous seam you use in joining the yoke to the body earlier on and just follow the same seam line and stitch the lining together with the body also then after that you're going to notch then you move to the end line of the blouse you stitch the lining together with the body Then you go back to the underarm, then you stitch the two sides together. So when you're done turning it, you bring it out to the good side, you attach, you join front and back together, you attach your sleeve. This thing that I'm stitching here is just a flounce, just regular flay that I attach quinoly. I cut it with organza and I'm just placing it on the pencil sleeve that I cut. Alright, so the next is just to close the side. And just confirm your measurements before you close the side and that will be the end of the tutorial for today if you would like to see how I draft the back and also stitch the back let me know in the comment section so that I can upload the tutorial otherwise we we'll move to the next tutorial thank you bye, bye.